More advanced lever harp players often tune their harps to the key of E flat major. This tuning allows for the greatest number of possible keys without retuning the strings. Now, just like in the key of C major, your C, D, F, and G strings are all naturals, but your E, A, and B strings are all flats. And the result sounds like this, starting on the E. Now let's go ahead and tune that on the tuner, and we'll do a close-up so you can see what's happening. Starting on E flat. tuner doesn't say it's an E flat, it says D sharp. So what's going on? Have I got the wrong string? No, I took, I double checked, I'm tuning the E string, I want an E flat. Problem is that the tuner has a different name for E flat. Tuners are set up so they only express sharps. E flat and D sharp are actually two names for the same note. They're known as enharmonic equivalents. If you think about the keyboard of a piano, there are white keys and black keys, and there's a black key between a number of the white keys. Those black keys can be called a sharp or a flat, depending on the context of the music you're playing. So you can either call this string D sharp or E flat. I'm calling it E flat, but the tuner wants to call it D sharp. So what we've done to solve this and make it a little bit less confusing is you can go to my website, mossheartservice.com, and download a tuning sharp chart that will tell you which notes on your tuner correspond to the strings on your harp. And I'll go through it now so you can get an idea how it works as well. So starting with E flat, once again, that registers as D sharp. And I'm pretty close to in tune. That needle's close to zero. That's pretty good. Moving up, I'm tuning an F natural, so that will read just as it sounds, F, a little bit high, getting closer, and pretty good. Next string is a G natural, uh, that will also register just fine on your tuner as a G, a little bit low. Next string is A flat, which on the tuner will register as G sharp. And is a little flat. Bring it up to zero. Good. Next string is a B flat, which will register on the tuner as A sharp. And it's a little bit too high. Bring it down. is a C, which we'll read as a C on the tuner. A little bit low, bring it up. That's good. Next string is a D, which we'll read as a D. That's easy enough. It's kind of high. That's pretty close. And lastly, we have an E flat, which once again is a D sharp on the tuner. Come on, you. That's pretty close. pedal harp is tuned so that when the pedals are in the middle or natural position, the strings will play in the key of C major. But as we said earlier, we don't tune with the pedals in the natural position. They have to be up in the flat position. So we have to tune the harp one half step lower in the key of C flat major. So every single string is going to be flat, but as we saw with tuning that Thormalin harp, the uh, tuner is going to tell us it's in sharps. 
So once again, download the tuning chart from the website, mossharpservice.com, and it'll show you which notes on the tuner correspond to the notes on the harp, and I'll go through it right now. I'm going to start with the C string on my harp, middle C, but since it's a C flat, it reads on the tuner as a B. So, just want to get that needle to zero. It's pretty close already. You'll also see how both of those lights lit up, and that also indicates that it's in tune. Next note up on the harp, it's D flat. Tuner is going to tell us it's C sharp. And it's a little high. Lower it down. Okay. Right about there. Next note is E flat on the harp. Tuner says it's a D sharp. That's low, flat. Tune it up. There we go. Next note on the harp is F flat, also known as E on your tuner. It's a little high. Closer. There we go. Next note is G flat, which registers as F sharp. There we are. Next note is A flat, which reads as G sharp. A little high. Bring it down. That's pretty good. And B flat, which reads as A sharp. Pretty close. There you go. And one more C. C flat reads as B. Low. take that. Now that we've gone through some specific tunings on different harps, let me give you just a couple more general pointers that'll help you no matter what harp you're tuning. One helpful technique is to tune your string down and then up. That If you're doing a lot of tuning, that tends to give you a more stable tuning. So I'm going to go down and then back up. Bringing a string over pitch and then back down just doesn't tend to seem to stay as stable as coming up from below. So it's a good technique to bring your pitch down and then back up. Another good technique to keep in mind is I mentioned earlier that electronic tuners do not function as well in the highest register of the harp and the lowest as well. So you need to develop some ear training techniques to be able to hear uh, the, some of the strings yourself, up high and down low, that the, the tuner won't help you as much with. One technique for that is to match a, a high string to the octave below it. That's the same named string below. So I want to tune this high C here, and I'm going to try and match it to this C that's an octave below. So put my tuning key on that high C, bring it down a little bit. So you can now you can hear they're not. Not the same. And I'm going to bring it up. That matches pretty well. All right. So how often should you tune your harp? That depends both on how much you play. The more you practice, the more you'll find your harp needs tuning. And the temperature and humi humidity in your harp's environment. If you keep your harp in the same room all the time and the temperature and humidity are fairly constant, you can probably get away with tuning just once a week or so. I would tune more frequently when the seasons change, when you move your harp, and if you're going to play in public, you always want to try and be in tune then. I would recommend tuning your harp at least once a week, even if you're not playing it, because it will be more stable when the time comes to play it again if it's kept close to its correct pitch.